so I apologize in advance if I sound weird or a little bit congested. Uh, it's because I am. I'm also recording this with a laptop uh, with no microphone or whatever, so yeah, that's part of it. Um, I mean, you know, it's you're going to get like background noises, all kinds of shit, so if you hear aliens in my attic or something... They're probably there. They're probably uh, trying to get Rocky Road ice cream, which is generally what I give them to get them to be quiet um, when I make these videos. Anyway, um, 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 that's that's a recurring thing with me too. Every time I make these videos, I say um a million times because I don't write scripts. I just improv these as I go. Now, with all that being said, I wanted to make this video to talk about EQing audio to make tapes that are dubbed with a duplicator sound better. Now, if, you've, uh, if you're into cassette tape labels or you've got your own label or whatever, you'll know a lot of people use the old style like Telex, Sony, Record X, whatever, duplicators to uh, crank out a lot of cassettes fast. A lot of people also will just daisy chain several decks together with a master switch, which is what I was doing for a long time, but it's very, very demanding from a maintenance standpoint because if you have several decks where the belts fell, at all at once or you have an issue with record playback switches or something you're fucked you know what i mean you're you're fucked especially if you've got tape orders now i'm i'm uh i'm young i'm young to the tape recording game to the uh to the tape label game i should say i've been recording tapes for years but from that perspective i uh i struggle a lot with trying to find out the best way to do these tapes and I, uh, I decided to pick up a uh, Telex Copy at Series 2 duplicator off of a guy in California, mainly because I got tired of working on multiple decks and having them fell at the same time, and also because of the space. Uh, I was using all top loaders, and I had them sitting in my living room, and those motherfuckers took up a ton of space, let me tell you. Uh, I'm sure anyone who's, who's done this sort of thing knows knows they take up a lot of space. And with regards to duplicators, uh, you Google it, you Google dubbing audio tapes with the duplicator and you see the same thing repeated over and over oh those machines have a frequency cut off of 10 kilohertz they're piss poor for audio you don't want to use these for a tape label you don't want to use these for music blah 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 they're made for churches they're made for church sermons which is true they are made for church sermons uh they don't sound good that is that's 100 percent true now if you're doing like really lo-fi no-fi cassette tapes it doesn't fucking matter you know what i mean they're gonna sound bad anyway and you can do your best to make them sound good and that's what this video is about uh doing the most you can with the resources available to you essentially the techniques i'm going to show in this video uh work to a certain extent to help compensate for frequency loss and make your duplications sound reasonable you're never going to get perfect quality with these machines, but this is how you can make them sound pretty damn good for a budget basement bedroom uh, cassette label. And I love uh, budget basement bedroom shit, to be honest with you. The dirtier, the better. But by the same token, you want your stuff to actually sound decent. You don't want someone to get a tape and be like, hey man, this fucking tape sounds like it was left on the dashboard of a fucking Chevy Viking for 650 days straight or something. I don't know. So that's, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm rambling now. It's, that's the third thing I do when I make these videos. I go on a long-winded rant, so it's time to start talking about EQing. So these tape duplicators work by the premise of a master tape going in the main well, and then the side wells, in my case there's just one, duplicating the master tape. Uh, and they generally duplicate tapes at 16 times the speed of the master which is another good reason to have these things, you know what I mean? Because you don't want to be setting, fucking waiting for tapes to dub, adjusting faders for 600 hours when you can just crank that shit out so then you can get back to engaging in petty vandalism or whatever you do for fun in your free time. Now for the purpose of this uh, video, I'm going to be using the album Wild Lilacs by American Pain Horse, which is a beautiful fucking album and Noah really outdid himself with it, and I highly recommend listening to it. You don't even have to listen to it through my shitty tape label. Just go listen to it wherever you can, because it's fucking good, and it deserves to be listened to. And, uh, first of all, I'm gonna start with, uh, un, un, uh, un -EQ would Master, and I'm going to duplicate that Master. And then I'll play sound files for both, and show the spectrograms for both. And you guys can see the frequency loss in the duplicated copy, and you'll be able to hear it too with your ears. So here we go.
So as you just saw there, the duplicated copy suffers in the audio quality department. Another thing I forgot to mention, which is worth mentioning here, is that the duplicated tape has some slight damage, so you can hear a dropout in, I believe it's the left channel. And another, another thing is the fact that I had to uh, rebuild this duplicator when I got it. I had to do some mechanical and electrical alignments to it. I had to align the head with regards to azimuth because that was like totally off and I think it's because the head rests on this little plastic shim and in shipping it got messed up. I also had to recap the amplifier for this thing so there's that. Now in this picture that I've been talking over uh, this is the EQ curve I apply to this via Audacity and I'll play the EQ'd master and then the EQ'd uh, duplicate. And the goal is for the EQ duplicate to sound as close as possible to the original master before EQing. Uh, you want to try and get back some of the high frequency components that are lost. And I think it does a pretty reasonable job of it. I've done this to several tapes now and I've noticed drastic improvements. Now granted, maybe it's just my ears, but I've noticed improvements in the audio quality. So I'd, I'd say it definitely works to a certain extent. From this we can see that our EQ'd copy improved a lot with regards to frequency response, but uh, it really isn't where it should be yet. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to EQ again and change the curve type that I'm using. And I'm going to particularly focus on that range of frequencies from 1000 to 7000 hertz, the, uh, the higher end of things, and apply some gain so we get a different curve for our master. And then we'll see what that looks like on the on the duplicated copy. So as we can see in here, our, uh, our second curve got us way closer to where we want to be. And so now, uh, essentially, we could go back and mess with this more and change the curve to get closer to our source audio. Or we could say it's good enough for government work. Either way, uh, that's, that's really all there is to it. Just uh, if you play with EQing enough, you will get your duplicated tape to sound damn near identical to the source tape. It just takes enough uh, practice and a lot of patience. So anyway, hopefully this video was useful to those of you who do tape recording or have a tape label or just work with tape duplicators in general.